If we're going to want to store data on our Raspberry Pi, we're not going to want to store that data on the SD card with our operating system. We're typically going to use something like a USB flash drive. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to actually connect your USB flash drive and actually mount it in a specific place in your file system. I mentioned in a previous video the fact that the Linux operating system doesn't have separate drives like Windows does. For example, within Windows, if you click on My Computer, you will often see a C drive and a Z drive. Within Linux, these are all incorporated into a single file system. So the first thing that you need to do is obviously to connect your USB drive into your Raspberry Pi. Once you've connected it, the next thing to do is to type sudo fdisk minus l. And this is going to list out all of the disks which are connected to the Raspberry Pi. You can see here that we have our USB drive which is connected to STA1. You can also see that this is an NTFS file system. Those two pieces of information are going to be important because the location in dev STA1 is the point that we're going to need to actually mount into our file system. And the fact that it's NTFS means that we're going to need to install the relevant drivers so that we can write to NTFS file systems. Because by default, Raspbian doesn't include those drivers. So now that we have this information, we can go ahead and create a point for us to mount our drive to. This can be anywhere at all in our file system. But I would typically mount a drive somewhere where I'm going to actually store the data. And so just for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to create a new folder called MNT, which stands for mount. And I'm just going to call this SDA1. You could of course call this whatever you want. And I'm also going to use the sudo account to do this. In this case I've already created the directory and so we can't create it again. Rather than just mounting this drive on a one-off occasion, we're going to actually mount this in a way which is going to be repeatable. And is always going to mount the drive in the same place every time we use it. To do this we're going to use nano. We're actually going to need to use sudo nano. And we're going to edit etc fs tab which stands for file system table which is by default going to display this file if we go to the bottom of this file however we can add a new line to actually mount our usb stick and so what we're going to do is we're going to type dev sta1 which is the location of our file system by default and we're going to mount it to mnt sta1 which is the file that we created previously. Although on this instance I had already created this file. We're then going to have a space and we're going to specify the type of file system. As we mentioned, this is formatted in NTFS. There are many other different file system formats. As you can see above, we have PROC, VFAT, X4. We're then going to leave a space and we're going to specify some options. So we're actually going to use the defaults for most of the options. And then if we use a comma separated list, we can amend some of those values to suit our exact needs. So the UID, or the user ID, is going to be 1000. As is the group ID, or the GID, also going to be 1000. We're then going to specify a UMask. Of zero 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 and then a space a zero and a space and another zero. The U mask and these final two numbers are not really too important right now, and so I'm not going to go into the reasons why we include these. But if you press Ctrl X and save this file and hit enter, we're then going to need to go ahead and actually mount that file system properly. And so to do that we can type sudo mount minus a. And that's going to mount everything for us. 
So if we just clear that screen to make it a bit easier to understand. If we change the directory to mnt slash sca1, we can tell by the fact that we have actually not had an error message that this has worked properly. If we type ls, we can see that we have a folder called system volume information. Now remember earlier we also mentioned the fact that this drive is formatted using NTFS. To actually write to our drive, we're going to need to install it. And so we need to type sudo apt-get install ntfs-3g, which is the specific implementation that we're going to need. I already have this installed on my Raspberry Pi, but you can obviously hit see the command and if you hit enter, it will download the package for you. And as you can see, NTFS 3G is already the newest version on my drive. But this will obviously go ahead and install the package for you, if you don't have NTFS already installed. Now that we have NTFS installed, we can go ahead and create new files. So we've just created that test file, for example. Without NTFS installed, you will only be able to read files. You won't be able to write to them. Or you won't even be able to create new files. So bear that in mind. In the next video, we're going to be having a look at users. Creating users, deleting users, and actually managing users. As well as some of the general administration things, such as changing passwords for users. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it.